in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Psalms 50 and verse 23. Please pay attention. 50 and 23. The Bible says, Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, and to him that ordered his conversations aright, I will show the salvation. Will I show the salvation of the Lord? To him that orders his conversations aright. That is the person who will see the salvation of the Lord two scriptures and then I'll begin to teach in Ecclesiastes chapter 5 from verse 6 and 7 very very interesting scripture the Bible says suffer not that means do not allow suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin look at that scripture very carefully do not allow your mouth to cause your flesh that is your body it's an ancient word for body. That means your body, he's saying here, is at the mercy of your mouth. Suffer not your mouth to cause your body to sin. Then he says, neither say thou before an angel, it was an error, I made a mistake. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the works of thy hands? Look at this deep spiritual mystery that your entire body is at the mercy of your speakings and that you must be able to train and culture yourself that you do not stand and say, oh, I made a mistake before an angel. There are consequences, the Bible teaches. In Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4, the Bible tells us, speaking about the principles of dominion, that where the word of a king is, there is power. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Now, please look up, believers. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ was designed by God to be a place for the maturity of believers. That means when a believer submits himself to training, to mentorship, to doctrine among the many things that happen to you is that you will ascend realms in the spirit that will have physical expressions your maturity will be seen and known by all that you have encountered God but that you have also encountered the ways of the spirit hallelujah you must understand the culture and the modus operandi of the kingdom. If you are to excel and to reign in the kingdom, you are not going to use luck and chance and emotions. There is a way that kings reign. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 that we have been made unto our God kings and priests and he says we are supposed to reign now many believers talk about the dominion of the saints as kings and priests and that is true because the bible says so and that is the will of god as revealed from scripture but the dynamics of walking in dominion as far as our kingship is concerned many believers have not been taught and so we have continued to program all kinds of failure and defeat and pain to our Christian experience hallelujah where the word of a king is it says there is power where the word of a king is there is power some time ago I I think I was sitting quietly you know in the living room and sometimes I just have a few minutes for myself and I could just scroll down channels to see what is happening 
and I stumbled across a documentary don't I can't remember what nation and that documentary it was a research about a group of people in fact the study showed that many many localities in Africa have that that um, that kind of setting where they call them rainmakers hallelujah so that these rainmakers are a group of people usually in many cultures who have through decades perfected the art of manipulating climates are we together now so that they can make a climate through divination or through whatever it is you find those people according to the research in many parts of Africa Nigeria especially Kenya several regions and for some of them when you meet the priests and the mediums they will tell you that this has been a practice for hundreds of years passed from one generation to the other so I think the documentary um, brought people to record them so that they would cause rain to fall and so they would say a lot of things chant a lot of things and according to eyewitnesses as they interviewed them they said they could make a bright sunny day in a matter of minutes be heavy with clouds and then begin to bring rain down many years ago I schooled in a place where it was purported that they had the power to hold rain and I saw it myself on their market days you would see the cloud thick it will be ready to rain but rain will never come they will hold the rain up until 1 or 2 a.m. when everybody has gone home then there will be such an avalanche for no reason this happened many times at least I was a witness meditating and preparing this teaching i thought about these people called rainmakers and it really really occurred to me that the believers experience as far as dominion is concerned is in the similitude of these people called rainmakers even though this is by a demonic agency but that these supposedly weak men have been able to access the windows of the realm of the spirit and that they could use enchantments and divination to do something to a physical climate and make rain to come are we together now and then they could do something again and while I was meditating the Holy Spirit took me and said no you don't need to worry about the rainmakers go and read about Elijah Elijah was an authentic biblical rainmaker that the man stood by prophetic authority and spoke over the heavens not in a radio station not in the presence of people who you know walk in all of this 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 climate agencies he made a decree to the heavens and he said that there be no rain for a space of three and a half years and look how intimidating that statement was because no matter who you were you could pray and shout and God would say it's not my fault Elijah has spoken it would be unwise to believe nobody else spoke and said but God show mercy Elijah had spoken and after three and a half years Elijah came back again and said this rain is going to come back and the Bible says he prayed and prayed and prayed and he saw a cloud like a man's fist and he told Ahab saddle your chariot and be on your way I hear the sound of the abundance of rain physically there was nothing like that but from the realm of the spirit that was a real rainmaker and the king went and the Bible says that he girded his loins and he ran on barefoot he overtook the, uh, the the chariots of Ahab even down to Israel listen if people can use divination and program a climate physically not consulting you whether you are in agreement with them or not they don't ask everybody in the village democratically 
Are you ready for rain or not? No, no. A few people have done business with the realm of the spirit and they can agree and manipulate the cloud physically. That means it is within every believer's jurisdiction. Are we together? To program a climate of spiritual possibilities over yourself such that no matter what is happening in Egypt, Goshen can be different. You can program a climate of rainy season even in dry season are we together now but there is a secret that in this kingdom believers and kings must understand the power of words and the power of speakings as far as programming spiritual climates are concerned in Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 14. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 14. The Bible says, A man shall be satisfied with the good, okay, satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. Is that in your Bible? And the recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. That means a man's satisfaction does not just come from his job. A man's satisfaction does not just come from your mind alone. The Bible says a man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. Are we together? In Proverbs chapter 18, let's read 20 and 21. Most times people just go to 21 but they don't read 20. Let's read 20 together. Proverbs 18, 20, 21. Ready? One to read. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips. Ah. With the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Then 21 now. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof they that love death shall benefit from it through their mouth they that love life shall benefit from it he said they that love it it gives you the option but it says you will eat the fruit thereof for sure please look up when we began our experience with God our faith work with God one of the many things that we were taught and gracefully we were taught early was the prophetic implication of the speakings of a believer. Now, most believers have not been trained to understand that the realm of the spirit was designed with words. Are we together? It took words to frame the entire earth. That means the earth only responds to words. Because you see, you look like who and what gave birth to you. If it was words that gave birth to you, then words will have to sustain you. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3, it says, Through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things that are visible or do appear. Words. John 1, 3, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made all things not some things were made by him and outside of words was not anything that was made there are many believers who do not know that when the Spirit of God came into your life it's not just that he wants to make you a man and a woman of character in as much as that is important your dominion principally depends on your mastery as far as speaking is concerned that there is a relationship between your ability to speak prophetically and in sync with the word and the will of God and your manifestation many believers have found themselves programming eels the Bible says do not cause your flesh your body to sin because of your mouth hallelujah now, every culture I know of and every region I know of, among the many things that unite people within that culture is language. We learned that in social studies. Is that true? 
that one of the binders of regions is language we call it tongues or tribes so when we say you are Yoruba it means there is a speaking there may be other aspects of the culture but the most visible aspect that brands people culturally speaking is their speaking do you agree with me there may be other things facial expression physiology you know history and all of that but the principal way you know a Yoruba person is through speakings the principal way you know an Igbo person the principal way you know a Nigerian and American is through words the tongue is a revealer that means just by listening to someone I can write so many things about that person without even meeting him physically are we together if it is true that language reveals culture then it means the kingdom itself should have a culture and a way to communicate that if I hear you speak in a certain way the same way I can look at you and say are you Yoruba there there is a kind of speaking are you Hausa are you from South South are you from this region there is a way a believer should be able to speak that immediately a fellow believer hears you know that this is a child of God you don't need to start probing and say are you born again that may be important but I'm saying the language should already reveal culture when a Nigerian meets another Nigerian in America or Europe aside from the physical physiology as soon as the person begins to speak, the intonations, the accent, he says, you are my brother and my sister. And immediately, total strangers, they shake themselves with respect to that foreign environment. Most believers have not been trained that as a believer in Christ, your speakings reveal many things, but more importantly, your speakings program many things. Even science and technology today, as they continue to advance, they are getting to the realm of possibilities through the spoken word. Is that true? So all kinds of gadgets now do not need to be mechanically manned by hand again. They respond to speakings and they call it technological advancement. So you stand in front of a door and say open and it opens. You stand in front of this and you can program all kinds of things just by words. If science finally agrees with the faith life that words are important, then you must pay attention to it. Because there are many people right now, the snare that you have found yourself in, it did not just come by a demonic agency alone. It came because of your ignorance, knowing that every word that you speak has an effect in the realm of the spirit that will work for you or will work against you. If we are together, say amen. amen. So the Bible says we are satisfied by the fruit of our lips. The second thing I want you to know about cultures and regions is that among the many things that bind people sociologically are cliches and certain communications that they could be slangs, they could be all kinds of linguistic expressions, are we together, that bind people within a territory. When you come to Nigeria, there are words that when you use, every Nigerian understands what you are saying now. Growing up, there's something they call yabin. Pay attention, don't miss this now. Laugh, but let your concentration still be here. Are we together? So what happens is two people will sit down just like they are playing chess, and then they will look for the most demeaning, insultive, funny, and ego tearing description and land it on that person then the other person waits for his turn and so they usually are spectators who keep assessing by their laughter and their commendation who is funnier and who is being demeaned the more we have those kinds of expressions in our world and while in many cases it was intended to be a joke there are many people who do not know that demon spirits and familiar spirits 
are some of the sponsors of some of these linguistic things that have rested upon regions that people have received sociologically are we together I don't die finish does that sound like something you say all the time and while you are saying it the person you are talking to understands and the realm of the spirit too understands their version of what you are saying and it is recorded in the realm of the spirit there are many things we have been trained to say there are regions in this nation where the only way to show that you are pious is to express mediocrity at you can use words and tear yourself down the moment that happens people feel that you are pious we have embraced some of these things and we do not know that these have been the programmers remember the rainmaker teaching that for every time we do these things we feel it does not matter there are children parents who give birth to children and begin to call them certain names big head idiot where are you and the boy says sir for 10 years that boy was answering idiot by the time the guy gets to 11 years you have programmed a kind of rain what begins to happen to the guy his brain, his thinking, his creativity deflates to reflect the power of your word. And now you begin to wonder, why are you such a dull and a stupid child? How about the teachers that train children in school? Many people do not understand the power and the implication of words. There are children who go to school and they begin to hear all kinds of things. Demeaning statements from teachers maybe, from their colleagues maybe and they do not know that is programming I'm not just speaking psychology spiritually are we together and destroy themselves and put themselves in positions of failure and then we say it does not matter and the realm of the spirit keeps recording it keeps recording it let me tell you the truth in this kingdom, ladies and gentlemen, kings reign by the dexterity and the excellency of their speakings. The Bible teaches us to beware what we say. The moment the Holy Ghost is upon you, there is power upon everything you say. Do you know one of the reasons why the gift of faith among the nine gifts of the Spirit revealed? The gift of faith does not rest upon people indefinitely it comes and it goes you know why because under the influence of the gift of faith anything you say will come to pass and if the gift of faith remains with you and you are angry and you tell your wife may god punish you and may you die you just meant i am angry you see a dead body fall in front of you did you not read about um what's the, the name now those guys and um Ananias and Sapphira you have lied against the Holy Ghost bam right there the wife came and did her own right there two of them they carried their dead bodies hours apart where the word of a king is there is power so while you were declaring this Abuja self is a useless place a stupid place this place I don't know what kind of place is that the realm of the spirit receives those words in vials and programs them into a climate now please I want you if you don't believe this you are not a Christian the realm of the spirit is strict on speakings especially when the anointing comes upon you hallelujah Jesus made certain profound statements among them he said destroy this temple and after three days I will build it Jesus himself knowing the power and the prophetic implication of words words do not only reveal culture words program climates words program spiritual climates they can program a climate of possibilities they can program a climate of impossibilities Many believers have found themselves saying a lot of things and saying it does not matter. This is how I, this is how we speak in Nigeria, they say. This is how we speak in UK, they say. Hallelujah. 
there are regions of the world where they call people they name them by animals and they say it very wonderful oh you are a dog they they say that to mean you are my friend you are my close ally you don't have to call me a dog to show the level of our friendship just just my opinion are we together and we answer some of these things no wonder we start behaving like them words the moment you begin to speak remember you are a spiritual rainmaker if I would use that expression you are programming something upon your life in Israel for those of you who have had the opportunity to travel to Israel historically even up until today when you curse somebody it is a very big issue in israel you know why because they were trained there from judaism they understand the power of the spoken word when fathers want to bless their children they don't give them physical things they call them and from the depth of their spirit they release prophetic words what are they doing programming their climate you see that from Abraham to Isaac, from Isaac to his sons. Why do you go and meet a man of God and you say, sir, bless me. And while you are saying, bless me, you are even putting your head down. What exactly do you expect to happen? He is not releasing anything physical. It's not his saliva you want to come on your head. Yet you are happy. And he says, may God bless you. You lift your hands and your head and say, amen. And you actually believe you received something. Are we together? Words are so powerful. It took words for you to be saved. Not just intention. Not just motive. Wishing to be saved was not enough to change you. You had to use words to verbalize your interest in God. Declare your helplessness and to ask for his grace and his mercy. Words are powerful. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. The Bible says in the beginning from verse 1, God created the heavens and the earth. Then verse 2 says the earth was without form. Please look up. The earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. I have taught you that theologically speaking, we call this the gap theory. There is still a lot of haziness between 1 verse 1 and 1 verse 2 because it is believed to be many years apart. It is believed that this confusion right here came as a result of the judgment of the then earth. Are we together now? He says, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Verse 3. Now, the surprising thing is that God never discussed the issue of the darkness. When God looks at a chaotic situation, it was only fair enough for him to at, at least analyze. Okay, spirit of the living God, I can see darkness, I can see chaos, I can see this destruction. However, we are going to fix it. Mm -mm. The first statement that he would make is light. And the Bible says there was light. The Bible never said darkness fled. He says there was light because he did not mention darkness. What he called was what gained the emphasis there in that statement. There was light immediately. When it was time to make man, here comes words again, let us make man. My question is, did he have to say it? When he had the power to do it? I understand speaking light, but I mean, did he have to say, I will do it, then start doing it? It was wise enough for him to just make man. But he said, listen, this is what we are going to do. He spoke it and he did it. The same principle you find in Genesis 11. When Nimrod, the son of Cush, was going to build, they already had the materials, brick for mortar and slime. They would have just started the building. But they kept, they kept speaking. We are going to build. Are we together now? Words are very powerful. Words are not only informative, words are creative. That means when you speak, you are not only speaking for awareness. Please believe us, hear me. You are not just speaking for enlightenment. You are also speaking for creation. Creation in this kingdom happens at the instance of words. 
That means the believer who is the creator is one who knows how to use words, not just to inform people of what you are doing. This is one of the reasons why names are powerful because names are not just a means of identification. Names are prophetic words. Every time people call your names and speak it, they are creating something or enforcing what has been created. No wonder Jabez changed his name. No wonder Simon, you know, changed his name. God had to change Abraham's name to Abraham because prophetic speakings are very powerful. It was at the instance of our speaking through worship that the presence of God mantled this place and things began to happen. Imagine when you come for service, someone sits down quietly and then a prophetic word comes and at the instance of that word, something begins to change. That means that thing could change, but that which makes it change was not yet spoken. Please understand this and you will find out that the results you will begin to command in your life will surprise you. Are we together? Say not before an angel, I made a mistake. In Matthew chapter 12 from verse 34 and 35, please give it to us, Matthew 12, 34 and 35. Jesus is rebuking the people now and he says, O generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? Aha. Uh -huh. He's taking it a step further now to help us understand that while it is true that your speaking is what creates, controls, and manages your spiritual climate, there is something about your state and your speaking. Your being is where your speaking comes from. Are we together now? He says, oh generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good? That means if you are evil, you will speak evil. If you are good, you will speak good. Your speaking will always be a reflection of your nature. Being evil, speak good things. For out of the abundance of the heart, Jesus is teaching us now how, how words are framed and formed before spoken. Out of the abundance of the heart, he says, the mouth speaketh. That means the mouth does not speak until the heart is full. When the heart is empty, the mouth cannot speak. But when the heart is full, inevitably, the mouth will begin to speak. 35. It says a good man. Who is that man? A good man. Out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth what? So, good man good heart good things then he says an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things please i want you to follow very carefully there are many believers who when they teach about speakings and the power of words as a dominion principle they do not focus on the heart condition they just say change your confession and don't speak negatively and while that is sincere the bible tells us that as powerful as your mouth is your mouth your body is a slave to your mouth while your mouth is a slave to your heart so the most powerful part of you is your heart your heart controls your mouth and your mouth controls your body so when the devil wants to destroy your body he does not just focus on your mouth first. He goes to your heart. Are we together now? And plants seeds of fear, seeds of defeat, seeds of death, seeds of mediocrity, seeds of limitation. From the abundance of that heart, the mouth will start programming a spiritual climate that has a physical implication. Job said the thing that I feared has come upon me. It started with his heart, then to his confession, the wife looked at him and said, why don't you curse God and die? Her heart was, her mouth was only a revelation of what was in her heart. So when you look at your wife or your husband and say you are a stupid and useless man, the problem is not what you said. 
and the answer is not sorry the answer is transformation are we together because sorry can be a borrowed word that you can use the real problem is that that speaking when you look at your son and say you are a useless boy you will never become anything you are a foolish girl you are a prostitute and many people africa we are victims of these kinds of things people become angry and they speak and program destruction over their children, over their subordinates, over the people around them, and they wonder why the continent remains the way it is. Israel is a place that is in a desert, and yet, in that desert, everything grows because they understand the power of speakings. You get there, the first thing you hear is shalom. The peace of God rests upon you. The children have been trained. In other religions of the world, even before a little child starts going into the regular schools with any kind of means and by all means they program certain things into their hearts first hallelujah most believers have not been trained to understand the power and the value of words and the key is not to mechanically speak well please look up this is what I want to correct. You do not speak well just by intention. Your speaking is a product of your heart condition and your state. So you find people who carry a semblance of being cautious. Bless you, good morning. And then the moment something pushes you, your heart pushes away your brain and brings out what is really there. Don't talk to me or just because I'm in Koinonia here. You don't know who I am. Go and ask those who know me. And then people become like wild animals. And later you go back and then you say, sorry, it will not happen again. And your heart says you are joking. Are we together? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It says a good man, out of the good treasure of his heart. That means the man is not good, he is good because of the state of his heart. People are not evil because of what they do. People are evil because of who they are. An evil man, even if an evil man speaks good, is still an evil man. Eventually the heart will betray him. Is someone learning now? This is very powerful. Africa, let me tell you the truth. Nigeria, please listen to me. Now, I'm somebody who is very real. I understand. Politically, the climate is not very favorable. I understand. Economically, the climate is not very favorable. But our mandate is not to keep enforcing the darkness in our environment by sowing our own contribution of darkness. What we are seeing in this nation, what we are seeing in Africa is a cumulative of everybody's contribution. I know you will not like what I'm saying. But don't make a mistake of standing in self-righteousness to believe you did not contribute anything. The stupid boy that you said added to the climate. The wicked woman you said added to the climate. The realm of the spirit has an assignment of gathering the words and building the climate. And we have become negative rainmakers over our destinies. There are regions that have alienated themselves and say from this village, nobody rises up to go here. We are all failures. And they did not know that they were prophetic rainmakers. There are many business people, even in Abuja here, who have said, I can't succeed, I can't rise, don't worry. And while you are saying it, you think it does not matter. Everybody here listening to me, you are a prophetic rainmaker over your destiny. If there has been drought and darkness over your life, I want you to know that there is something you are neglecting. You are a king, but you do not understand the power of your scepter, your crown, and your words. Hallelujah. So this is how I'm going to die. This is how my life is going to be. So I will not get any job in this Abuja. I will not get job in this Nigeria. In fact, it looks like doors will not open up for me. Let me tell you the truth. You can run anywhere to the world. If it's still the same you, it's the same result that will follow you there. Are we together? There are things you will never hear me say 
about myself. There are things you will never hear me say about this ministry. There are things you will never hear me say about the body of Christ. Please listen to me. This is more than positive confession. We are talking of the mystery of creation. Becoming a prophetic rainmaker over your destiny. That you can stand and in the name of Jesus when you understand this. You can lay your hands on your womb. And you can begin to declare no arm robber comes out of this womb. And while you are speaking the realm of the spirit. There is a system of documentation happening. Hallelujah. Many people said all kinds of negative things about their lives. For me, I have chosen that my vista and my template will be that which is consistent with the word of God. It does not matter my background. It does not matter where I came from. It does not matter who I know or I do not know. I understand that the dominion, the mystery of exercising kingdom authority demands I will never you won't hear me say oh I'm leading a stubborn people I'm no 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 I won't do that look at the character of God he appears to Gideon a man who is hiding and the first thing he should do is Gideon you are such a foolish young man come out of that place of hiding first this is God now and he says so now has it helped you mm -mm. oh mighty man of valor that means every negative thing you have been hearing about yourself is not God. You can, you can use this to know who has been talking to you. Hallelujah. Is someone learning now? Genesis chapter 3. The Bible says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any creature that was found in the garden. Please pay attention. He said, he said to the woman, yea, had God said, ye shall not eat of the tree of the garden. Next verse. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it lest you die. Listen to Satan now. Satan heard what God said. Now he's about to speak. He understood the power of the, the creative power of the speakings of men. The serpent said, ye shall not surely die. Five, for God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Verse six, look at what immediately began to happen to the woman as a result of the words. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, her perception started changing at the instance of that word. And a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also to her husband with her and he did eat. Seven. And the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig, fig leaves together and made themselves apron. Verse eight. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. I like verse 9. And the Lord called unto Adam and said, Adam, where are you? You know what this means? Where are you does not mean physically where are you. In the realm of the spirit, the words that I spoke over you secured you. There was a position of authority that could be seen in the realm of the spirit. But something happened on earth through words. Now we don't see you again. He doesn't mean where are you hiding in the garden. You have, you have fallen from a position, an ascended position in the spirit. Where are you? Verse, nine, verse 10. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Never forget verse 11 for the rest of your life. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Keep that question there. Who told you that you will never get a very good man to marry you? Uh-huh, I've said somewhere that touched you now. <laughs> Look up. Who told you 
that they've forgotten your application. I'm not sure my application, who told you? Do you know what God is saying here? Everything that enters your heart came through words. That's what he's saying. It is impossible for it to have gotten to your heart. The only vehicle that carries convictions to your heart are words. Who told you? I'm seeing a reaction within your heart. And I'm telling you that how it got there was not through assumptions. Words have a way of transporting realities from this physical realm. You can hear it through your ears, but it does not stop there. It steps into your mind and finally settles in your heart. And begins to program that climate. You become a negative rainmaker programming all kinds of destructive things who told you you are a failure who told you you are not a beautiful lady who told you you are not a handsome guy who told you you are a lazy person who told you you cannot become that prophet who told you you cannot become that great woman who told you your region is a disadvantage you had someone tonight God is speaking to someone you have been hearing many people, it's time to hear me. You have been hearing the voice of culture. You have been hearing the voice of limitations. You've been hearing the voice of the devil and even familiar spirits. Who told you? Who told you? Who told you you cannot rise to become that man of God? that woman of God who told you you cannot raise children to be great and champions who told you because you came from a background that does not seem to have any comeliness around it that you cannot become a great person God is speaking to someone here someone's speakings has entered your heart do you know let me tell you this words are so powerful ba. you can hear something in 2001 and think you are free from it and it can remain quietly there it just needs to stand near the door of your progress and remain there you are a useless lady you will not go far and you mean oh no in the name of jesus i i i don't believe what you are saying he still entered and every time you want to rise you hear that voice again you will not amount to anything listen this is where the implication of influence comes in and let me respectfully at this juncture just challenge parents men of god politicians or people who are occupying any position of influence we have to be careful with our communications i know we are humans but we must obtain grace from god you may never understand the implication of your wrong speaking to your child in anger you just told him you're an embarrassment to me i thought you were going to get first class it is terrible to know you have two two or even two one shame on you the child may keep quiet but you have programmed a stumbling block a familiar spirit keeps thanking you for one year for making his job easy he comes to land on that word and you deflate the child's passion wanting to rise to a new dimension he says there's no use do you know why the believer is mandated to study scripture for many reasons but among them this is the manual that programs your heart so that from your heart through your mouth you now program your climate is someone understanding this now can i tell you the truth there are many people who died, listen carefully, many people who died simply because of the ill speaking of others. I think I was reading about a, a research that was done on patients, that there are patients who when they are sick and in bed, if their family members come to surround them, you know, and encourage them, there's a lot of laughter, that chances are excellent that they can even live longer, even survive that ground. Do you know why people die in the night? Because in the night, it's full of silence. Someone can be encouraging you by seven, eight, nine, and then by one, two, you only hear the voice of darkness, and the devil comes through that darkness. You are still alive. Are you not surprised? Take your last breath and go. 
There are people who would have died since they refused. They're nowhere. They were sick and sick. They're, from a physical, they just said, no way. There are people today who certain negative things would have come upon them. They refused. They said in the name of Jesus, for as long as I am alive, I owe myself that responsibility. The rain that comes is the rain I create. And let me tell you the truth. If you are not creating it, someone can help you. And I pray that it's not a negative climate they create for you. So you find out that the rain of failure, the rain of disappointment, the rain of closed doors coming upon you and you are wondering what is this? What is happening to me? Only to know that while you slept in the dream that you had, someone was speaking negatively. As soon as you woke up, a negative demonic movie was playing adding to the programming again and then you get up in the morning from your house through the junction to your office you have received one year worth of negative programming you're driving and somebody sees you and the person just looks at you and from afar the person is already stretching his hands towards you and adding words on top and you too you say okay pack Back and less and all, all you, you are programming climates. The wise understand the power and the value of their environment. Are we together? Yes. Do you know why the Bible says, give us Ephesians 5 now, you will understand. It told you that when you are full of the Holy Ghost, there are three things that the Holy Ghost will make you say. Ephesians 5 20 19 Ephesians 5 19 please let's hurry up give it to us speaking to yourselves in number one Psalms I leave that one for next year most of you do not know the power of Psalms you see this Psalms you see is a mystery that man called David Psalms he says when the Holy Ghost comes upon you how do you think David wrote Psalms by intelligence no the Holy Ghost came upon him and he found himself writing things the Lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall I be afraid of are we together now the Lord is the strength of my life what can man do to me so that confession called Psalms was inspired by the Holy Ghost and he said you can verify the spirit that is influencing you by what you are saying if the Holy Ghost comes upon you you will find yourself speaking Psalms Psalms the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake, Psalms. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you call it confession. The Bible calls it Psalms. Understand what I'm teaching you now. That every time you are under the influence of the Holy Ghost, what he does to you is he makes you to begin to speak to yourselves in Psalms. Number two, hymns. You see, eh? do you know why these hymns don't die? There are many songs that are dead. They wrote them last year. They are dead by now before December because the depth in the spirit from which they were fetched, it was, it was not anything serious. Some of these hymns you will see 1890 something. Now, of course, there may be some scriptural errors because it was men that wrote it. But let me tell you the truth. Hymns, it does not just mean SS and S alone. It's a prophetic statement. These people that wrote hymns, you see, they were not just musicians. They were inspired of the Holy Ghost. Is someone hearing now? Showers of blessings. Showers of blessings we need. Mercy drop round are falling, but for the shadow. When you were growing up, you used to sing it, but now that you have become a matured African, you left what can lift you. I'm not just saying it must be chanting it, but most people 
do not know that they have been negative rainmakers to their lives because they have ignored the power of Psalms. Speaking to yourself in Psalms, in hymns. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus and righteousness. I cannot trust the sweetest friend. Oh, you still remember? Please listen, let me tie up something I'm teaching you because what I'm teaching you is very powerful. Do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit, speaking, speaking in Psalms, speaking in hymns. Then you get to this third dimension, speaking in Speaking in psalms, speaking in hymns, speaking in spiritual songs. They are not just special numbers. You hear me say, You reign, you reign, hello, you reign, you reign. What is that? Yeah. Ask Sam who wrote the song that when it came to him, is that his language? Did you not hear the Bible says, though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, there are communications that do not belong to this realm, but are needed in this realm. Are we together now? Tongues is one of them. That when someone begins to pray and you are now even praying in tongues it does not make sense but the Bible says you are reacting to the influence of the Spirit and although men may not understand there is a programming happening in the realm of the Spirit spiritual songs hallelujah Listen, then the Bible says something very interesting. It's saying, making melody in your heart. In your heart? How do you do that? Your heart has a voice. Is that true? She said to herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, Say not to yourself, who shall ascend? Listen, let me tell you this. These are simple but profound mysteries. Paul would not gather in front of God's people and be wasting their time teaching them jargons. These were the ladders that he followed himself to ascend these realms of strange power. Speaking to yourself in Psalms. Psalms means Psalms. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the power of the, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over the city, they watch it in vain. When the Lord turn again the captivity of Zion. Hold on. That means at any point in your life, you begin to sense, you know how people sorry for the use of words you know how people throw up something within is what causes it isn't it you start feeling you want to throw up that is how it is in the spirit Yeah. 
shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. from a background where no one has risen. Show me a man surrounded by failure causes poverty. But then you know how to be filled with the spirit that the moment the presence of God comes, don't keep quiet. The next thing is to begin to speak to yourself in Psalms, speak to yourself in hymns and spiritual songs. Prophetic rainmakers creating a climate of favor, a climate of glory, a climate of grace, a climate of longevity, a climate of power, a climate of possibilities. Listen, hear me, hear me. Many years ago, when this ministry was at its infancy, I made a prophetic statement by the Spirit and I said we will all be great and that the greater part is we will all know ourselves. It was not a suggestion. It was a prophetic word that came from the depth of the Spirit. Hallelujah. What are you saying in your house? Or what is speaking in your house? Sometimes you are not the one saying it, but you are allowing demonic atmospheres around your house. Negative atmospheres. Let me tell you this. I'm sure it has happened to someone where you are soaking yourself in an atmosphere of worship or a message and then you fall asleep and you find out it still continues with a stronger atmosphere of power and sometimes you wake up under such an intense influence Adam who told you what have you given permission to speak into your life who have you allowed to program your thinking to program your mind to alter you Dear prophet of God, who did you start listening to that you stopped believing in yourself? What did you start listening to that suddenly made you all rules to become a weak person? Words make strong and words make weak. Words make wise and words make foolish. Words bring power and words bring limitations. Listen, let me tell you this. When I get up in the morning, sometimes I walk around room to room. Every room in my house is an altar. I don't care whether it's the toilet, whether it's the bathroom. You know, you can have designated places, but it does not matter where. Sometimes the revelation you need can come in the kitchen. You are washing your plates. But there is an atmosphere. Shani Salika Bragadu Ziata. And the Spirit of God says, Now call that person immediately. And you make that call. And the person says, You are a spiritual man. I've been, I was just trying to call you. And that begins a new season in your life. Hallelujah. Can I tell you the truth? Do you know why many people go to bed? and several people have negative demonic atmospheres because they do not pay attention to invest in atmospheres over over seven or eight years ago i preached a message called the law of atmosphere 
everything that happens on earth is atmosphere dependent destruction is atmosphere dependent breakthrough is atmosphere dependent the growth of your plant agriculturally speaking is atmosphere dependent that means you kill things not by killing them you kill things by taking the atmosphere i mean medical science teaches us that there are advances in medicine right now that are mastering the art of studying viruses and bacteria and certain living organisms they study the habitat that makes them conducive is that true and they create medical mechanisms that try to extract away the atmosphere and that's it it just dies there are many things in my life and your life that have remained because we have kept the atmosphere that promotes it for instance there are many people who come and program negative things in your house because you have not created a system that honors God there. Are we together now? Yes. Some of you, your cars are full of all kinds of things. You drive for 30 minutes and all you are hearing is something that pollutes and destroys your mind. You left your house courageous. By the time you got to that place of the interview, you were already defeated because you had something. Who told you? Who told you when God was sending us to Abuja all I needed to know was God are you in it and then grant the grace listen one of the things that by the grace of God I thank God for the grace to have done is to culture my atmosphere my atmosphere is very strict very strict very very strict very very strict very very strict very very strict you create that because you see many people's destinies depend on your motivation many people's de destinies depend on your inspiration are we together yes. some of us if we check our phones right now and we see what is in your phone both in terms of songs videos etc we will need to plead with you to run and come out right here don't wonder why familiar spirits are, are all around your life they come in response to atmospheres is that true yes sir are we together negative atmospheres ah this nigeria will we ever survive the way this thing is i hope we we'll even see the end of the year and these spirits brood on what you have said. I'm teaching you a technology right now, Koinonia. Listen, I'm not teaching you to ignore realities when you see it. No, there are times we discuss issues. But you must understand that as a spiritual man, the modus operandi of creation is that you must fill your heart with the word of God. And out of the abundance of the heart, alongside the influence of the spirit, you begin to speak. May God bless you. Somebody comes to see you and says, listen, things are not really working well in my life. You are under the influence of the Spirit. When the Spirit of God came upon Elizabeth, remember the mother of John, what did she begin to do? Speak it. You see it happen everywhere. The moment the Holy Ghost mantles people, they begin to speak. Trying to change your confession without allowing the word of God to work on your heart will only be hypocrisy that does not carry power. There are many people who have tried to do it. Oh, I will try to speak right, but they are not interested. The content of your heart is what inevitably reveals itself through your words. And please hear me. Next time you speak, don't you think you are just using words to explain or using words to inform more than using words as a tool for explanation and information. The most superior use of words is for programming because when God spoke the first word there was no man there yet he spoke so in order of priority and by the law of first mention words are not just a channel for information words are not just a channel for enlightenment the most superior use of words is for creation I'm on my way to better days I'm on my way to paradise.
That's my confession and I truly believe it. I'm on my way to better days. It is true for me, it is true for you, it is true for Koinonia. You receive a letter, you are being relieved from that job. Ah, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because the Bible says, listen, every time you don't know what to say, start with atmosphere. Let me teach you a principle. Every time you do not know what to say, just keep quiet. Program the atmosphere. The atmosphere will affect your heart. The heart will affect your speaking. Your speaking will now change or maintain the reality there. Just to let you know that you lost the business, you lost the job. It may be painful, you may cry because we're humans. But while you cry, you can just go and set something. Or for some of you, they may even tell you, you you've lost a loved one. Just like that, God, this person shouldn't have died. And then you go and put something that will program a climate for you. And in the midst of that climate, the Spirit of God. Have you noticed in the atmosphere of worship, you will always hear what he's saying. He will begin to encourage you. There is hope for a tree, even though it be cut down at the scent of water. Huh. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your light. Please hear me when you understand the prophetic power of this mystery I just taught you indeed you will be a king because you will know how to program things you can imagine as a man of God I get text messages every day some of them good some of them not so nice some of them even conditions about people people in koinonia here and the principles of fatherhood and leadership demands that when something negative happens to someone it touches you and let me tell you there are times you have to train yourself just know that the number one rule for your dominion is atmosphere don't forget this this night the number one rule for your dominion is atmosphere i don't care what is going wrong make sure that you don't lose the atmosphere if you are crying crying in the right cry in the right atmosphere Apostle, I thought that by now, God would have opened that door. I thought that by now. Ah. But Lord, I give you thanks. Because your word says in all things I give thanks. You are creating an atmosphere. Father, I know that I've looked onto men and it looked like they are not able to help me. My uncle gave me a guarantee that the job is coming. Now the job came and my name is not there. Father, I will not be offended. I refuse offense. In the name of Jesus, offense will be a trap that will give the devil access to my life. I reject offense. In the name of Jesus, I walk by the law of love. But oh God, the Bible says they looked onto him and their faces were lightened. So I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. I'm showing you how to change atmospheres. My hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. So Lord, I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. My hope is Yahweh. Just to let you know. That they finally given you their word still you do not throw the atmosphere father thank you praise God from whom all blessings come Lord I thank you you are the giver of this and the Bible says whatsoever you do it endures therefore I expect my result to endure this is how a spiritual man works are we together this is what I declare over koinonia all the time in the name of Jesus, I and the ones that God has given me, we are for signs and we are for wonders in Israel. I believe it. When I pray for Koinonia, I pray for Koinonia everywhere. US, Europe. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. As you bless me, you are blessing my people. As you lift me, you are lifting them. Yes, sir. 
Pharaoh, you must let God's people go in the name of Jesus. When you hear something negative, don't grumble around and say, no, it cannot be. That's emotions. That's not a spiritual man's approach. A spiritual man does not jump throwing tantrums. You may cry and do all of that, but when all is said and done, atmosphere, remember again, atmosphere. And the atmosphere begins to play those worship songs and your spirit is getting enlarged and strengthened and you begin to pray. Sometimes you begin to pray in the spirit and you may pray for hours until it breaks away that limitation. Then you begin to prophesy in the name of Jesus, the gates of Abuja open up. I decree and declare, lift up your heads, O ye gates. You must become a prophet in your destiny. Thank God for koinonia. But this, this, this baby pampering, you need to grow out of it. Win yourself and begin to walk with strong mates. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, my finance is blessed. The Lord himself is bringing people to bless me. The work will not suffer. We have supernatural finances. The wisdom of the spirit is at work in us. Week in, week out. The word of God comes in season. We are people of discernment. Speaking to yourself in Psalms. See, this is how we got here. Let me tell you, it is not magic. You are too big to come under the influence of the Holy Spirit and to begin to speak, forget about dominion. Kings reign through their words. Let me give you one more word and then we'll pray. Someone is going to return here with a strange testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 141, two scriptures. God's standard for maturity and perfection is the extent to which you have gained mastery over your speakings. Psalm 131 verse 141 from verse 3. It says, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth and keep the door of my lips. In other words, Lord, grant me self-control self-control over my words to understand the value the creative value the programming value of my speakings as the believer in christ so that i am not careless in the use of words i don't program ill program negative things over my life now let me show you a very powerful scripture james chapter 3 James chapter 3. Give us beginning from verse 1. I want you to pay attention. This will be my last reading. And then we'll take a few minutes to pray. My brethren, be not many masters knowing that ye shall receive the greater condemnation. Uh-huh. For in many things we offend all. And if a man offend not in word. Is that in your Bible? The same is a mature man. Entire whole. God's standard of perfection is the scripture worthiness of your speakings the degree to which you have cultured your, your your words which is a product of the strength of the word resident within you the bible says he is able also to bridle the whole body you now see it there that your words control your body three behold we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us so he's saying you want the body of the horse to obey you and the area you focus on is not the legs is the mouth and we turn about their whole body through their mouth verse 4 behold the ships though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds yet are they turned about with a very small helm whithersoever the governor listed that means these giant ships ships that sometimes are bigger than this auditorium by far and yet you will see it's a little ruder that controls them and you can turn the ship literally 360 verse 5 even so in that similitude the similitude of the horse and the similitude of the ship 
the tongue is a little member koinonia listen please and boasted great things behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth verse 6 and the tongue is a fire so the tongue is more than an object it is a fire the bible says a world of iniquity so is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and set it on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire of hell verse 7 for every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind geography attests to this agriculture attests to this there is no animal on earth as we know now that has not been tamed by man we have been able to tame lions eagles including microorganisms but the bible says verse 8 in spite of the fact that we have been able to tame all these things it says but the tongue can no man tame it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison nine therewith we bless god even the father and therewith we cause men which are made after the similitude of God. What a paradox. With the same tongue, you bless him. We bless you, Lord, you are holy. And forever you are God. That's what he's saying. We bless you, Lord, you are holy. And forever you are God. And the next moment, keep that scripture, please. The next moment, you are finding it, you are cursing people who are made in the same image of the God that you are worshipping. Verse 10. The Bible says, out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Two more verses, 11. Dot a fountain set forth the same place sweet water and bitter no can a fig tree my brethren bear olive berries either can a vine bear figs so can no fountain yield both fresh and salt water you know what he's saying it is within your power to choose that by the agency of the spirit if you look at this tongue as small as it is forget that your mouth is closing it it is closing many people's destinies as small as this tongue is apostle james was saying this tongue the same way a little rudder of a ship can turn that ship left and right based on what the compass says or what the captain wants the same way a horse a horse that is so powerful yet they bridle the tongue and can move it they can force it by doing something to the tongue that means he's saying if your destiny is going wrong remember you are the captain of your destiny you don't have to start pushing the ship to go back. What you need to begin to do is to go back. How did the prodigal son go back? He said to himself. That's the starting point of his restoration. He came to himself and said, not and did. It was saying first, I will arise and I will go back to my father. The moment the Spirit of God came upon the four lepers, they started speaking. You see the pattern everywhere. When the Holy Ghost rests upon people, they begin to speak. For many of you, the power of God comes upon you, whether in church, whether in your homes, and there is an opportunity to program that climate, to be a prophetic rainmaker, and then you keep quiet. No. In the name of Jesus, for as long as I live, my body remains in health. Perfection is my portion. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I decree and declare that the word of God upon my lips continue to change nations. You go and lay your hands and begin to speak over your office. In the name of Jesus, listen, I want you to teach your children. I want you to teach them. If, if you can, guide the people even within your organization that there is a creed and a code of conduct that you speak 
this is not the issue of Christianity if I will use that it is even from a scientific standpoint it's been proven that words heal words are medicinal the Bible says a merry heart do it good like medicine is that true but that a broken spirit can dry up the bones I will worship him forever, love him forever because this God is too good. You know, I shared with you a story here, Koinonia, that one time a gentleman was entering into a city and um, two gentlemen actually, and there was a farmer that they met just by the entrance of the city. And one walked to the farmer and said, dear farmer, and he said, yes, how can I help you? And he said, I hear that this city is full of all kinds of things, violence, you know, moral decadence. This city is full of thieves, armed robbers, unserious people. And the farmer kept quiet and said, you are right. And the man passed. A few hours later, another gentleman coming into the city stopped by and said, dear farmer, he said, yes, can I help you? And he said, I hear that this city is full of visionary people. The soil is very good. It is able to produce. And the farmer said, yes. All of it can be found in the same city. In the same Nigeria, where it looks like economically we are going down. In the same Nigeria, where it looks like we are losing our touch governmentally, unfortunately. In the same Nigeria, where it looks like there's darkness and everything. In that same Nigeria, God is raising an army. In that same Nigeria, there are souls that are being saved. In that same Nigeria, are we together now? It is up to you to change your perception by the influence of the Spirit. That when men say there is a casting down, you don't join them to say there is a casting down. The reason why they are down is because they said it. For you, you will say there is a lifting up. It says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Koinonia, learn to say so. Because when you say so, it becomes so. When you say so, you create it so. When you say so, you become a prophetic rainmaker over your destiny. Walking in abundance, moving in the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am faithful. I believe it. That I am walking in abundance, moving in the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am faithful. Let me tell you the truth. I'm going to say something and I want you to pay attention. Years ago, even before God began to help this ministry and show us mercy, even in the area of finance and the rest, physically everything was not there we still had limitations here and there but i can tell you by god one thing i never stopped doing was to prophesy the, the version of koinonia that will be financially stable to serve the lord i vowed a vow that i will never lie and manipulate god's people because of looking for offering to pay for tea and bread and I found from scripture, he said, when I sent thee, lackest thou anything? I submit to you without any sense of pride. It does not matter what nation and what region God takes us. We have mastered the art of the supply of the spirit. Yes, sir. There's nothing the devil can do about it. It's not pride. It's the truth. Hallelujah. There is no time you will come here for koinonia and you will not experience the presence of God to lift you. Because you see, before you arrive here, the rainmakers were at work. Koinonia does not start on Sunday. The koinonia starts immediately after the last service. There are rainmakers. Are we together? The worship team is singing, praying, preparing to set the atmosphere. The prayer band is sending that, that cloud Everybody's making his contribution. By the time we arrive, the cloud is ready. It's not our arrival that makes the cloud. That's too late. 
whether the devil goes to Zaria or comes here or decides to go to you know Kenya or go to America the the beautiful thing about cloud eh? so many of you have flown across and you can see that sometimes you look at the I mean the size of the cloud covering you you can look at the region that the cloud is covering that means you can be able to make such investment in the spirit that from here it will reach the US from here it will reach Europe in the name of Jesus Christ you can program that cloud over your house the moment defeat and failure comes the priest in the house has become a rainmaker already Satan not my children in the name of Jesus Satan not my finances Satan not my spiritual life Satan not my passion not my word study life you will not deflate my passion for God let the redeemed of the Lord say so remember the law is atmosphere the atmosphere gives the Holy Spirit room to rest upon you in partnership with the Word of God that has been invested within your spirit you begin to speak in Psalms in hymns in spiritual songs everything that is less than Psalms hymns spiritual songs please do not give it dominion over your speaking that a major part of your speaking should be a communication of psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. I've had the honor and the privilege of many times meeting the fathers of faith in this nation, and I can tell you in my experience, every one of them that I have met, the moment you talk to them, after 10 seconds they are saying something. Either it is well, or praise God, or hallelujah, give God praise. They are with you. They have cultured themselves. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is well while you are there and the devil is trying to tell you something that you should not believe praise God it is well hallelujah it is well ah daddy this it is well it is well praise God praise God no wonder they still remain praise God no wonder they still stand it is well no wonder the doors keep opening hallelujah it is well it is well the hymn writer says it is well and it is well with my soul listen we are wrapping up we're going to take two or three minutes to speak but I have given you a new position tonight consistent with scripture you are a prophetic rainmaker over your life this is how kings reign this is how kings reign this is how kings reign we reign through the excellency of our words. For as long as I am alive, the name of the Lord will be exalted through my life. The name of the Lord will be exalted through this ministry. For as long as I am alive, Nigeria will remain in God's prophetic program, the cutting edge of God's program. While we see the, the decline economically and otherwise, for us, so, we begin to pray that Lord in the midst of this darkness you are brooding over every darkness you are causing light to shine from darkness the Holy Ghost is brooding over every darkness you are causing light to shine the worst thing to lose is your sound. The worst thing to lose is your atmosphere. The worst thing to lose is your voice. You can lose money. Your voice will bring it back. You can lose relationships. Your speakings will bring it back. You can lose whatever at the scent of water. The voice of the Lord upon the waters is mighty. But if you lose your speaking, even the culmination of this church age, will happen with sound is the loud sound of the archangel that will wrap up this dispensation the earth started as far as we know through the sound of his word and God said anything will start continue and come to end in your life by saying and God blessed man and said and Abraham blessed Isaac 
and said and Isaac blessed Jacob and said make up your mind from today that the word of God is going to be an intentional investment please look at me go and get Bible on mp3 go and get scriptures you can get it online is free to download some of you are into tech businesses this is what you should do I just gave you a business idea instead of running around and stealing you can do something that is noble and honorable package the Word of God some of you here you don't have to depend online you can go ahead and put together 100 healing scriptures 50 scriptures that help to redefine your identity in Christ give your son as a gift son you are 10 years old you are 2 years old you are 5 years old let me teach you how kings reign kings do not reign by roaming around and waiting for things to happen you put it in your ears you program yourself your little baby without the ability to talk without the ability to understand but with the ability to transport words into his or her spirit in the name of Jesus baby I decree and declare that you will serve the Lord all the days of your life you are a proper child you are blessed I want you to do it husband lay your hands on your wife speak to her she's going out Oh, may God bless you. Don't just say, honey, God bless you. And, and then later you hear something you don't want to hear. In the name of Jesus, I stand as your husband and I declare. I declare that your morning is commanded. Go in peace. Return with joy. You go forth in peace. You are led forth with joy. Little children are going to school. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. Go and do exploits. You are a champion. Go and reign. They will laugh. You will think it's not getting into them. By the time someone looks at them in school and say you are a fool, they will say, Daddy said I'm a champion. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. You come to church for koinonia and several things are annoying you. Make up your mind. The moment you are angry, stop talking. Get an atmosphere. Put something in your ears. In the name of Jesus, you immediately you are transported into a realm of possibilities. And what would have made you angry is just neutralized. Because remember, when seasons are about to open in your life, I've taught you, one of the things is the spirit of offense. Everything, your husband annoys you, your wife annoys you, your staff annoy you, Nigeria annoys you, Africa annoys you, journalists annoy you, everything. Even God seems to annoy you. But you must make up your mind. The climate. I remember atmosphere is a law. I just lost this business in the name of Jesus. I refuse to be sad. I refuse to walk in despair. You set that atmosphere. Some of you, my dear people, all this worship that you are playing here, don't just do it for Koinonia alone. I've taught you this. One hour, imagine if they do something like that, wouldn't you patronize them? One hour of soaking worship, volume one. Are we together? I, I'm not saying this, this is not this is not some mark. I'm serious with what I'm saying. Program that atmosphere. Imagine that you just wake up from sleep and you are just stretching, and all you hear is Amen, 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 Amen. Amen, 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 Amen. Hey, Amen, 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 Amen. 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 for stretching and you move to the other side of the bed the dream continues in that dream you are scattering the gates of hell empowered by the strength of the word within you you get up with the keys like Jesus got up from the keys as soon as you wake up from that dream who is this king of glory the Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle
amen, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. One more time. Amen. into three if you can we are going to spend the remaining just three three if there's nobody there just make it two or whatever but please we are going to pray help them under the anointing we are going to pray just two three minutes you are going to begin to pray in the spirit find any hand you find there and begin to pray and make declarations over the person's hand you are holding in the name of Jesus I declare, I come as a prophetic rainmaker. Come on, Koinonia. Following from your home. Hold the hands of your children if you can. Hold the hand of your wife, your husband. Hold the hand of your neighbor. Whoever you find. Touch and agree by faith. Go ahead and begin to pray. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Declare it by the Spirit. Psalms hymns spiritual songs i command restoration in the name of jesus the deliverer is showing up for you koinonia pray koinonia global pray america pray europe pray Africa pray I am a prophetic rainmaker I program the spiritual climate of my brother and my sister no more losses no more failure in the name of Jesus superior wisdom superior favor higher levels of power higher levels of grace strange breakthroughs by the Spirit pray the anointing that is within me is finding expression in the name of Jesus man of God pray and declare it's a new season in ministry it's a new season of exploits and impact for Jesus by the Spirit the hand of God is upon me Therefore, I speak in psalms, I speak in hymns, I speak in spiritual songs, making melody in my heart even unto God. No failure in the name of Jesus. My path is as a shining light, shining ever brighter even unto the perfect day the lord is my light and salvation in the name of jesus i rise by revelation the mighty hand of god is upon me when men say there is a casting down i declare by the spirit that there is a lifting up in the name of jesus the god of Joshuron is arising for me by the power of the holy spirit i am blessed in the city blessed in the country Koinonia is blessed, revealing Jesus, bringing him glory across the nations of the earth. Don't be tired, declare. Pray over your brother. I rebuke the plan of the devil over his life, over her life. In the name of Jesus, perfect health, perfect soundness. You will not die before your time. In the name of Jesus, your relevance will not be cut short. The spirit of the waster is far from you. Pray, 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 pray. The doors of nations. The gates of territories are opening by the Spirit. 
in the name of Jesus the sick are healed oppressed delivered the confused find direction sinners come to Jesus pray for Nigeria declare over Nigeria Nigeria will not fall Nigeria will not be destroyed for the sake of the elect of God no matter the schemings of darkness the purposes of God over this nation over Africa and you who is watching by, uh, by television pray for your nation mention the name of your nation South Africa Kenya Ghana Rwanda Uganda Central African Republic Cameroon declare by the spirit Cote d'Ivoire Africa is engulfed with the fire of revival Europe America Australia Asia hallelujah hallelujah in the name of Jesus this is how kings reign this is how kings rule this is how kings rise for by your words you are condemned and by your words you are justified hallelujah I'm going to speak over your life now then I'll do the altar call and then we are done this is already a pre miracle service believe me it's going to be fire next week in this place this is this is pre miracle service I want to speak over your life. No shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming after me. No world you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. One more time. No shadow you will light up. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. I have taught you tonight how kings reign every king you see who has taken his place of dominion and is manipulating the spiritual climates to reveal Jesus in his life has done it through the excellency of the speakings of the Word of God now that you understand the power of words let me speak over your life you don't have to kneel or what let it just be that your heart is opened please believe when Gabriel stood before Zechariah, he said, I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God. That means the presence of God has purified me, purified every falsehood. You can trust what you hear. That's what he was saying. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stand as a prophetic rainmaker over someone's life. That drought in your life, in the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall For someone here I prophesy to you you will not see wind you will not see rain even but I declare by all means may your valley be filled may your valley be filled hear me according to the law of time and chance 
For some of you, certain things have gotten to your turn, but demon spirits made it jump over you. I stand by the prophetic. I take it back to your turn. I take a I take it back to your turn. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. If there is any negative programming that came either by mistake or by ignorance you didn't know and you kept speaking things now that the devil is using for some of you based on what you have said you are not even more than two years left to live because you kept cutting your years with your words I stand by the power of the prophetic and in the name of Jesus I cancel every word speaking against you I cancel every word speaking against you for the Bible says no weapon formed against you will prosper and he said every tongue that arises please hear me no matter who has said what against you maybe growing up maybe his parents sincere people but what they have said is being used by the devil it has become a, a negative rain making process by the power of the prophetic I cancel it now where they said you will fall I prophesy stand where they said you will not rise I speak fly not only rise in the name of Jesus where they say you will not find helpers you will even have to choose who to help you where it has been programmed that you will lose your spiritual fire you will lose your relevance you will lose your bishopric you will lose your lampstand I prophesy 30 years from now if Christ tarries you will still be standing final prophetic word anyone under the sound of my voice that this statement Ichabod has been roaming around your head that means you are good for nothing that means the glory has departed that means everybody who sees you they should treat you like an outcast in the name of Jesus I roll away that negative word I say it again for someone who has been trusting God for rain your plans have refused to grow prophetically because the rain has refused to come I stand tonight as a prophetic rainmaker and I say it again by the power of words because by these words the cloud is full of rain may your rain begin to fall those of you in ministry I announce to you this is your season of exploits no power in existence will downplay and demean the anointing upon your life those of you who are diplomats and captains of industry we clear the way for your relevance in the name of Jesus those of you who are businessmen here and it looks like there is an embargo on your business you have tried but it looks like you are not rising if you believe this prophetic word I declare that between now and the end of October not November October in the name of Jesus receive strange help from God and for everyone here who is in need of restoration between now and the miracle service may God do something that has not been done in your life since the beginning of this year <laughs> hallelujah wave your hands to Jesus and give him praise wave your hands to Jesus a wave offering is a mystery in the spirit thank you Jesus we bless you we receive this by faith hallelujah hallelujah 
please lend me just two minutes let's minimize movement be patient I know that there are so many people I want to make an altar call someone came to church here and whilst you heard me talk about the power of words you just realize that the word that will lead to your eternal redemption you have not yet declared it for the Bible says with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation very quickly two people in one there are those who are saying apostle give me an opportunity I want to know Jesus I want to use my mouth and to practicalize this right now to make that declaration of faith there are others who are saying apostle I have made that statement but I'm not serious I want to make it right I want to rededicate my life whether you are in this auditorium up the balcony all of the overflows and those who are following across the globe here is an opportunity I'm going to count one to five I want you to quickly boldly don't let the devil remember we just spoke about words don't let the devil tell you people are looking at you no come who told you you cannot be saved who told you he cannot love you? You can start afresh. I don't care how it has been. You can keep standing. Let's celebrate them as they come. Thank you. Thank you. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Celebrate salvation. Young, old, male, female. And all those who are making this decision from across the globe, here is your chance to make it right with Jesus. There's no compulsion to it, but remember, by your words, you are justified. And by your words, you are condemned. There were two thieves that hung on the cross with Jesus. One by his left and right. One was making careless use of words. And he was speaking in a very foolish and unwise way. And the other one, spoke wisely with humility and brokenness and Jesus said about the latter that this day you will be with me in paradise words are powerful thank you very much for making this decision in the name of Jesus Christ as I lead you it's my honor to lead you to Jesus the fountain of life the beginning and the end he's alpha he's omega may I request that you please lift your hands high above your head as a sign of surrender this is to Jesus, this is to the King Immortal, Invisible, the only wise God. Say after me as loud and clear as you can, say Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. If you're joining them, come quickly. Say Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word and I believe in you that you are the Son of God. I believe in you that you are my Savior. I believe in you that you are my Lord. I believe in you that you are my King. Tonight, by faith and through the power of my words, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, as my Lord, and as my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i declare that i'm born again i'm a child of god i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these lovely people our precious family from across the globe and even here in this auditorium thank you father for bringing them to jesus such an honor to lead them to the cross i pray by the power of the holy spirit and upon the integrity of your word alongside their, their, their declarations of faith i declare your sins forgiven i call you bona fide recipients of eternal life in the name of jesus i commend you to god and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance even among them that are sanctified and I declare in the name of Jesus that from today you are the righteousness of God in Christ I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit go from glory to glory and grace to grace and every spirit that has hijacked your life and your destiny I command it to leave you now upon the integrity of your confession 
I declare be set free this moment. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. A big congratulations to all of you. Please may I request that you together move to my right just for a brief word with the counselors. Let's honor them as they go. Just a word and you'll be back. It's going to be just a few minutes and you'll be back. Let's celebrate them as they go. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.